Hey everyone, we got a little sponsor here. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. Not a single fan, and you can make money from Anchor. That's what we use for the Circle Club here. It's awesome. We're going to use it for some more podcasts in the future. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And now, the Tyrone Rose Show. Shorty from Barbados. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Well, I can't fight hell. Last time I seen a shorty like you, my crib had cable. I don't remember yet the last time mm. that my crib had mm. cable. Take my hand, I'll hey, say, hey. Shorty from Barbados. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Tyrone Rose Show. That was Barbados by Confused with a K local dude from Worcester. Um, shout out to him. He's letting me use any of his music on the Circle Club. Uh, good dude, good dude. Um, know him via my friend Eddie. Uh, a lot to get into today, but first off, we're moved. We moved. We moved into a new location. Uh, that's all set and done, thank goodness. That was a total pain. Um... A lot bigger space now, a lot more comfortable. Like once work's done, I could just come here, hop up on the podcast if I want, hop up on Twitch. Um, surprisingly, today was a good day. It's a good day. A lot of sports going on today, uh, a lot of music. I listened to some good podcasts today. Just good vibes overall, you know what I mean? Um it's funny, the uh, <laughs> just jump into it, I guess, but uh, it's funny, I, I literally was just talking about the whole cancel culture thing uh, a couple of days ago on the Monday show, go back and listen to that, um, and thank you everyone who did listen, and uh, I appreciate it, um, all the support and stuff. Last night, I went on a little rant on Twitch about, you know, the lack of support from friends and stuff like that, and, you know, that stuff sucks. That sucks. That's the reality of it, you know. I said it'd be raw on here. Um, you know, people constantly, constantly. I'm like everyone's therapist. It's like a, you know, running joke. It's like constantly coming to me, complaining and crying about their issues. This girl won't talk to me. She won't text me back. You know, it, or you know. Oh, what am I supposed to do about this job? Or, oh, like, take f- photos from me. Or, oh, can you link me with this person? That and the other thing. And I'm like, you know, uh, in the past, I have been a little cold. I can admit that. I can admit that. Um, so, you know, I'd say the past six years, I've been trying to be a little bit more positive, a little bit more patient. You know, I could thank Carly for that, my girlfriend. Um, definitely helped me become more of a patient person because that was not my strong suit. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm kind of reaching my boiling point a little bit. Be- All right, sorry about that. Um, Jesus fucking Christ. Apple is like the root of all evil, I swear to God. Um, you know, I, I had an Android Google Pixel for a long time, and I actually still use it. Um but, you know, I switched over to iPhone because of the whole ecosystem and Apple and stuff. But I've had this computer literally since, I don't know, 2015 or something like that, 2014. No issues. I update it every once in a while. But it's kind of gotten to that point where Apple's just like, any way we could make this computer slow, let's do it. So we'll just stop there. Fucking hate this company. They don't innovate. They do nothing. I mean, I literally saw a Google article the other day. They're talking about how they're going to start making so you can actually see black people in the photos. I was like, wow, congratulations. We can't, we finally figured it out, you know, that cameras are made for white skin. Like, I don't know if people know that. Go look this up. There's a great video on Vox. Um, but yeah, when Kodak originally made cameras, they made it for white complexion, which is why when you're standing next to your black friend or brown friend, you're always like, geez, the lighting's all fucked up. That's because Kodak decided that they were only going to focus on white skin. Um, 
But at Google, they're like, oh, hey, let's fix this problem. You know, um, there's a bunch of other stuff that Google did in their um, recent update. Let me look at this. I'm going to give them their flowers because Apple just sucks. Like, it's it's just not even funny. Like, like everyone uses Apple because they're like, oh, well, you know, all the celebrities use it and Apple is rich. I'm like, this is all marketing. How do you not realize that this is literally just marketing? It's a total joke. Apple does nothing to innovate whatsoever. It's fucking crazy that these companies still exist. Like, what, it, Google I.O. announcement. They announced some pretty interesting stuff. All right, here it is from the BBC News. Six announcements from Google I.O. More inclusive camera. You know, I just said that one. AI curated albums. So this album thing is gonna it's gonna make albums based on, uh, you know, location and person and all this different stuff like event. Like it can, I mean, newsflash if you don't know this, these phones are so smart that they know, you know, oh that's a birthday party, oh that's your collection of stamps. I, I mean, whatever you know, in these this. AI curated album thing is going to be something Google's going to add. Um, inclusive language. That's interesting. So they're going to start, you know, less less he, she, more they stuff. Android 12 is just going to be a big update. There's going to be this privacy feature that allows users to control, um, you know, who gets their information with the apps and stuff. I'm sure these fucking corporations will figure out a way to sneak their little weasel way through the back door. Uh, the coolest thing I saw was this 3D video conferencing feature. So, like, when you're doing a video chat, as they, you call it, um, it's going to make it look 3D. So, it's almost like the person's there on the screen. Like, that's fucking cool. Um, Google AI to help identify skin conditions. So, like, you know, everyone always goes to WebMD and to search something. You're going to be able to just literally take a photo and Google will be able to recognize it. Again, Google has all this information. They're smart. Whenever people wake the fuck up and get their heads out of the sand, you'll start to realize, huh, why is Apple not doing any of this stuff? Like, uh, one thing that people always freak out with Android, people are like, oh, my messages are green. If you switch to an Android, you could choose the color. And I'm like, why has Apple not figured out to choose colors? And I was like, wait a minute. They don't want you to be able to choose the color because then they can keep going on about this stupid fucking blue message green message thing and and then you just divide people to make poor people feel like oh i'm wealthy because there's a blue message oh that person has green they're poor when literally like you have samsung and google all these things making fucking apple products it's a fucking joke <sighs> anyways um i was just going on a little tangent before about you know people supporting and stuff that shit's frustrating you know um, you know, you, you, people don't say these things out loud. It's like, oh, it's frustrating that my friend doesn't support me, but that's what they feel inside. I'm sure there's other people out there who feel the same way. You're like, you know, whether it's your parents, your your partner, whoever, your friend, teacher, you're like, you want this person to support you, you know, throughout your journey. And, you know, for me, I don't, I don't feel like I'm getting that from my friends. I'm just going to be honest. Um... So I'm kind of at the point right now uh, where I think I might just start cutting my services off. You know, uh, today, there's a big dip in cryptocurrency because China, China said that, uh, you know, they weren't going to allow this cryptocurrency trading to occur. I uh, apologize if you can hear my squeaky ass chair. Um, but China said they're not going to allow cryptocurrency trading and then the market just absolutely tanked. Uh, Bitcoin was down like 50%. Dogecoin was down about, you know, 35% or something crazy. And Ethereum, like all these cryptocurrencies were just down, down, down. And in the past, in the past, I've Snapchatted my friends. I've messaged my other friends. Hey, buy the dip, buy the bit dip, you know, check out this. Today, I was like, fuck them. So if you didn't get a message from me today, that should let you know. I don't care about you right now. You're not on my good list right now. Um, on the stream the other day, 
we did call out Hannah, Hannah Dubin, because, you know, we showed her TikTok off. Uh, but she messaged me. She had therapy. So, you know, that's respectable. My, so public apology, public apology. She's not on my bad list. Um, but the rest of you, I, I'm not happy right now. Not even fucking slightly. Um, but yeah, I did buy the dip. I did buy the dip. The thing about investing too, like I try to, I'm one of those people, like I told you in the first, you know, show is I'm one of those people who came from nothing to something. I'm not where I want to be, but you know, I'm definitely not poor anymore. And, uh, the lessons that I was fortunate enough to learn by going to this incredible high school and middle school and stuff like I have those lessons based on my interactions and meeting those people, and I try to just pass it on to others. You know, uh, not everyone has that same educational background. I'm big on education. I think that's the number one thing to kind of dig people out of poverty and dig people out of their troubles is educating themselves. And you know, I try to pass that knowledge along to other people, and it's like I have some stupid fucking friends who literally spend like 50 bucks a week, a couple days on like fucking video games and fake stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, I try to get them invested. And, you know, I have friends who spend their money on shoes and clothes. I'm like, this shit has no value. The crazy part about it too is they listen to rappers like J. Cole and Jay-Z who tell them, you know, fucking invest your money. What are you doing? One of my favorite Jay-Z songs is the story of OJ. Because, you know, in that in that song or rap, he's literally one of the lines he says, I'm trying to give you knowledge. Let me pull up this line. It's, it's just crazy. He said, What the fuck is this line? I'm, Y'all think I'm bougie. I'm like, it's fine, but I'm trying to give you a million dollars worth of game for $9.99. That line is so dope to me because it's like $9.99 is what it costs to use his platform title. And what he's saying really is I'm trying to give you a million dollars worth of game by you know giving you the formula. Listen to my music. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. In this song, he's telling you, you know, you want to know why, what's more important than throwing the money, away money at the strip club? Credit. You ever wonder why Jewish people own all the property in America? This is how they did it. And I mean, it's like you have people who play this type of music on replay, play this shit over and over a day, They're in the gym, playing basketball, and it doesn't stick to their fucking heads. I'm like, invest, you idiots. Oh, I don't know where to start. Fucking YouTube it. I mean... The millennial generation is so pathetic, seriously. Like, they constantly make fun of baby boomers. Like, oh, boomers don't know how to do anything. Make fun of Gen Z. Oh, Gen Z's so emotional. Gen Z just puts all their feelings. I'm like, you, and I'm a millennial myself, but you dummies, you idiots have a computer. I mean... Google, you have Google, you can literally Google anything. I'm like, do you think you're the first person to have this problem? Whatever something doesn't work, whether it's my phone, you know, my laptop, um, I'm like, oh shit, like what happens when you like move or you're trying to rent an apartment? You can Google literally any of these questions. It, it, it just, it fascinates me when people say the word, I don't know. It's, it's nothing wrong with saying that you don't know something or recognizing your limits of your intelligence because, I mean, every, that's a, to me, that's a sign of intelligence. But to sit there and claim, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm like, there's so many resources out there. Fucking try. And if you're not try, ask a friend. Ask a friend if they know a friend. Makes no sense to me. Anyways, getting back to... My, you know, original point was I was talking the other day about this whole cancel culture thing and how Joe Rogan's like, oh, you can't make the same jokes today. Um, one of the most famous uh, radio hosts, Maddie in the Morning in Massachusetts, it's in Boston, it's one of the biggest radio shows like Kiss 108. Uh, he, he quit his job on the spot today. 
<laughs> he's quit his job on the spot today like a fucking nut job. Um, so Demi Lovato came out and said she was non-binary. Um, and for those who don't know what that means, it just means that, you know, she's not gender identifying. Doesn't identify as a male, doesn't identify as a female, whatever. You know, I'm the type of dude who I'm like, that shit doesn't affect me. That I'm not losing sleep over Demi Lovato being non-binary. But there's a group, there's a subgroup of men out there, especially white men, Jesus Christ, who just feel the need to say their opinion on every fucking matter. And it's just like, hey, shut up. Listen. Listen to what this person's saying. Shut up. What you have to say right now isn't the most important thing. Listen. We could all benefit from just listening. The other day I had someone lecturing me about Palestine and Israel. They were completely wrong. But, you know, whatever. I still listen to their point to kind of get their perspective of what they're thinking. You know? Now you ask me, I think, you know, Israel coming in is intrusive. However, if you ask them, well, they think, hey, listen, we won this war. This is our land. It's a fair take, right? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know all the inning, inner workings and inner outing history of the Palestinian-Israel crisis. I mean, I know I think seeing children bombed is wrong. doesn't matter who started it. It's like, you know... It, you, your, your, your older brother's picking on you. What, do you bring a knife to a punch fight? No. You know, and, and there's just some basic human nature things like that. But anyways, Maddie in the morning go, he goes on this, you know, I guess the producer told him, hey, you can't talk about this. And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? This is censorship. You know, I have the biggest show in Boston. This guy was, like, talking like he's the biggest swinging dick of all time. He's like, oh, I have the biggest show in Massachusetts or Boston of all time. He starts name-calling people he's better than. I was like, this guy's, I mean, this guy's a douchebag, <laughs> right? I mean, he's a fucking asshole. But he he's just, you know, listen off everyone he's better than. And then he goes, and the producers are telling me today, that I can't talk about this issue. If I talk about, you know, Trump and how terrible it is, that's okay. But I want to talk about this and I can't. You know what? I've had enough of the cancel culture. I'm done. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. You have this clown on live radio, right? I would have cut his mic and be like, see ya. Go home. Who the fuck cares what Maddie and the mic thinks? Seriously? I mean, I know some of you guys do. But, I mean, really, how, how old is this dude? Let me look up. How, how old is Maddie in the morning? How old is Maddie in the morning? How old is Maddie in the morning? Matt Siegel. Matt Siegel. All right, here we go. 71 years old. You guys give a fuck what this 71-year-old dude thinks? I mean, seriously. You wake up every morning and go... Let me turn on Kiss One Away to hear what a 71-year-old has to think. Personally, I don't listen to the radio. It's pretty archaic. I pop on a podcast. I pop on my playlist. Hot 96.9 or Jammin' 96.9, whatever they rebranded it, Pebbles. Shout out Pebbles. That's actually family. But, I mean, you really care what a 71-year-old has to say about anything? But, long story short, he goes on a tyrant and he goes, You know what? You guys value what I say, but not today. Matty out. And he walks out. And I'm like, uh, this dude is fucking crazy. This isn't even new to me. He's always saying, taking these crazy conservative takes. But it's like, this is like the peak of white privilege. Like, you know, people say, oh, white privilege isn't a real thing. Could you fucking imagine a black dude doing the same thing? 
And ladies, I hear you say, oh, hey, you know, it, men have all the privilege. I totally understand, you know, in, in the ranking of things, if I said this, they might rethink for a second, oh, he's, he's actually pretty talented. We might not get rid of it. If you're a woman, <laughs> forget it. They, if you're a woman, there's no way they would have let you even... He went on like a two-minute tirade. There's, you he, you wouldn't have gotten 15 seconds before they would have cut the commercial. But this dude is a white guy, 71 years old, thinks he's the big swinging dick, and he comes on there and basically is yelling at everyone else because he can't be gender phobic, I suppose, or you know, he can't spew his hate about how Demi Lovato is, you know, seeking attention. Like what a fucking nut job, huh? This guy. Imagine being like, you know what? I'm fucking leaving the best thing that's ever happened to me because you guys won't let me come on here and talk about Muslims. I want to talk about how Muslims are horrible people. Like, dude, you're a fucking nut job. Have a nice career. I mean, you really think that someone who's young can't come and do your job? You're 71 years old. What do you fucking know about anything? <sighs> Guys like that, man, I swear. Good riddance. I hope he gets fired. I hope they don't, you know, I hope this guy is done. Seriously. If they give this guy his job again, I mean, I, I'm going to go and say, you should boycott this fucking radio station because that's a joke. I mean, who's allowed to have a little baby tantrum, tipper tantrum when you're 71 years old? Be a professional. You know, they told you you can't talk about Demi Lovato. You fucking signed the contract on the dotted line. You can't talk about Demi Lovato. Go get your own platform if you have an issue with that. That's all I got about him. Like, what a douchebag, honestly. Um, <laughs> speak of which, you know, let's... Let's let me transition into the you know the regular folk because that guy he works six to ten every day. I'm sure this you know there's hours that go into it that we don't see, meaning his interns that he probably doesn't pay. But the other day someone was talking about a nine to five. I hate when we call it that. Why do we call it a nine to five? I ah, why do we call it? it doesn't make any sense. It's an eight to five. Yeah, you get an hour break. But you don't show up to work at 9. You show up to work at 8. I, uh, uh, Come on. Like someone said that to me the other day. And I was just like, you mean 8 to 5? Yeah, 8 to 5? And um, I was looking at some job listings and stuff too because we're, we're trying to get a couple interns. And I saw this article. And... They were talking about job listings and stuff. And one thing they said is low-skilled jobs. It was like Amazon. We're looking for low-skilled jobs. I'm like, how disrespectful can that be? Seriously. I mean, I know the vets get mad when you call anyone, you know, who didn't blow their brains out in North Korea or Vietnam a hero. They go, oh... Caitlyn Jenner is a hero for coming out. I'm like, uh, to get publicly ridiculed by millions and millions of people so other people can be who themselves? Sounds like hero work to me. But um, why do we call it low-skilled jobs? That, that, that was something that you know kind of ticked me off. Because I'm like, this pandemic... If you're living in America, if you're living in the suburbs, you know, you're not living in some of these other countries, the Amazon workers, the people who are, you know, doing your packages, the Uber drivers, you know, people working in a warehouse, the people cleaning up your yard, the people, you know, in the grocery store making sure you morons have toilet paper, you're going to call those people low skill if it's so low skill, why the fuck don't you sign up? That makes me so angry when I read that. Low skill jobs. 
What the? F- I mean, what the fuck does that even mean? Low skill. Why would you even disrespect your employees by saying something like that? A low skill job. If you're trying to say that you know there's not a lot of computation, say that I suppose. Or why say that at all? Say we're looking for people to bag groceries. That's totally fine. That's more than a description. You don't need to say we're seeking low-skill workers. I mean, employers have no idea about how they are the ones instilling this bad feeling you feel inside yourself, you know? A lot of people suffer through depression anxiety, feeling worthless. That has to do with your employer, your teacher, your parents, your loved ones not telling you, hey, great job. Hey, you're really working hard. You know, to come full circle, my friends not supporting me, that says fuck you to me, right? I And I don't expect my friends to be on, you know, Every stream I do, every podcast, whatever. But I mean, Jesus, can you share it to your story? I share your shit. Jeez, can you comment on the post of the algorithm and pretend you fucking care? Anyways. Um, I saw a movie the other day. I've been watching a lot of different TV shows and movies. I'm, I actually just started this new one on um, Apple. It's it's kind of like a mix between Silicon Valley and Community. Uh, what was that called? It's like a it's like a gaming one. Um, what was it? The dude in oh Mythic Quest. Mythic Quest. That's what it's called. Um, I didn't like it at first, but I'm kind of digging it. If you guys are looking for like a kind of show you kickback, maybe you smoke a little weed or something, Mythic Quest, check that out. Um, it's cool too because it's like, you know, we all grew up playing RuneScape or Webkins or Club Penguin and stuff like that. And basically it's about this company that's made the biggest, um, MMORPG which I'm assuming is like massive online role play or something like that. And they're basically trying to make their, they have the biggest company and they're basically just trying to adapt to the times, um, make their company more successful like Silicon Valley. But there's a whole community aspect to it, the TV show uh, where it's like silly, it's ridiculous. You got the old head. You got some young people, people in the middle, people who are experienced. It's a fun show. Uh, I also checked out this this movie that was on Netflix. I love space stuff. It was called Stowaway. And the cast for this movie was like, it, it was simple. It was simple, but there's Anna Kendrick. I'm sure you guys know her from, you know, Pitch Perfect and stuff. Tony Collette who is just this beast. She's in Hereditary. She's the Australian woman. Um, she's phenomenal. Uh, Daniel Day Kim, I didn't really know much by him, uh, but I, li- I liked his work a lot in it too because he's in the show The Good Doctor, Hellboy, and Hawaii Five O, and Shamir Anderson. Um <clears throat> But the cast was like, they, they blended so well together. And the idea was that it's this three-person crew going to on a mission to Mars. But then they start to face these impossible choices because they realize that an unplanned passenger is on the, the mission with them. So they have to kind of start making these decisions like, shit, we're going to have to take someone's life. Someone's not going to make it. How much oxygen do we do? Do we get rid of the science? Do we preserve this, preserve that, the other thing? Um, And it kind of becomes like, as you're watching it, you're like, you kind of start to feel claustrophobic, but in a good way, in a good way, where you're like, 
Like, how are they going to get out of this? And then the ending, it just, it was so flat. It was, it was the strangest thing to me because up until that point, the movie was so good. And then right at the end, they just blew it. And I was just like, how does this happen? Like, how is it possible that these people have all the money in the world, they have all the resources, the writers, the producers, everything, and then you just blow it? Um, oh, shit, I just looked this up. Um, apparently, the director and writer of this is Joe Penna, which I don't know if you guys know him, know this, but uh, from YouTube, remember, remember Mystery Guitar Man? He was a dude who had the glasses. He would play songs on the guitar. And I don't know, he was really quirky and stuff like that. Look, look, look him up, Mr. Guitar Man. Shit, I haven't heard that name in forever. Uh, but I still recommend you watch it. It was really good. Um, the ending was like, again, it, it was it is what it is, but like it was still a really interesting um movie. Uh, speak of sci-fi, Attack the Block. That's coming back. They make it a part two, and I think. John Boyega is either like directing it or like very heavily involved or might be back in it. Um, fun fact: that's like the I think that's the first British movie I ever saw, and or well, I probably saw a couple other ones. I mean, I grew up listening to like for some reason my parents like put British TV on for me as a kid. I have no clue, but and none of them are British. It's fucking weird, but. Um, this was the first British movie I saw that was in the hood. Because, like, up until that point, you know, it's always prim and proper. And, mom, are we going to go find ourselves a nice, lovely nine-to-five job? <laughs> uh, or whatever the fuck, nine-to-seventeen. But it was the first time I was like, oh, shit, they have the hood in, in England? I had no idea. Uh, that's a really good movie. That's a classic, man. That's a real classic. Attack the Block. And like I said, John Boyega, who is the lead, uh, who was the lead star, one of the lead Star Wars guys in the new trilogy series. Uh, he, he, I think that was his first major gig. He crushed it, too. He was bombing that. Um, but yeah, they're making a second one, so... That's that's gonna be a, like a big thing. You'll start to hear a lot of people talk about. Um, what else is on my mind here? Oh, <laughs> there's this guy on TikTok. His name is KB Lame. Oh my God! When Carly watches this guy's video, it is the funniest thing ever. She hates this guy. Like, if you know Carly, she's like one of the nicest people you ever met. She's always sweet. You know, like I said, super patient, but she can't stand this guy. So what he does is he like finds uh, these videos on TikTok where someone's trying to be clever with their DIY and shit like that. So someone took like like a syringe that you use for like Benadryl or something you give like babies, and he like took the guy like this person took the top off and they put like a drill on it so that. Long story short, they like took this syringe and kind of made it into like an electric toothbrush. And this guy, KB Lame, is such an asshole. He just watches the video and he like he always does what they can do in like three seconds. So there was this guy, another one was like this guy had his like shirt stuck in the door and he was like, huh, huh, how am I gonna do it? And he like breaks the window with like this like pen thing and he just goes and like opens up the door. <laughs> With the key. I'm like, this guy is such an asshole. But she absolutely hates him. Look him up. K-H-A-B-Y dot L-A-M-E. It's very, very funny. Um, those guys on TikTok and those people who do those things. Uh, what I, you know, realize is like the reason they're so successful is because they just don't care about money. They don't care about any of this stuff. They just kind of do stuff. And it really blows my mind that there's still people out there who like get super, super freaked out and stressed about money. And like I said, obviously it's easy for me to say because I'm not hurting right now. But, you know, it's just weird. Like, 
it never really occurred to me that people don't understand that like money doesn't matter. Like I was talking to one of my uh, friends, and they were going back and forth about you know does the man pay? Does the woman pay? Um, who pays first? So like oh I paid this time, and I'm like, who cares? Like when you're in a relationship, it's like a unit. Like I just it doesn't it like blows my mind that people don't know this. It's like if your wife or your partner is making 500,000 and you're making 100,000, well, you have 600,000 because you guys are a unit. You know, that's something together. And if that's something you guys are like, "Oh, you know, I'm an individual. I'm an individual." Like, that you guys got to talk that shit out. Otherwise, that's going to become an issue down the line. Like for me and Carly, if she needs money, like I would give it to her in like a second. Wouldn't even think about it. If I need money, she would do the same thing. Because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, if you guys are going to spend the rest of your life together, well then, I'm sure I'm going to pay for something at some point. You're going to pay for something at some point. Like, don't stress about that type of stuff. If you're with someone. If you're just starting a date, you guys are just starting to get to know each other. I'm a little old-fashioned. I'm old school. I think the dude should pay. Or whoever, you know, ask the person out. If it's a hetero relationship, the guy, if you're asking her out, you should do it. If you're the girl and you're asking the guy out, which might shock some people, I think you should pay for it too. You're asking the other person to take a chance on you. You know, that's what like, to me, that's never like occurred to some people, but it's like, okay, you're asking this stranger, essentially, right? You don't really, because like if you're asking someone on a date, you don't really know them. You're getting to know them. You want to know more about them. You're asking them, hey, take time out of your schedule, out of your life to come spend a few hours with me. That person shouldn't have to pay for that because if that date sucks, that shouldn't be on them. That should be on you. You're asking them to risk you, you know, like I didn't sign up for the fucking casino. You t- you broke me to you brought me to Foxwoods, you know. I think like we got to we got to kind of transition ourselves in society to start thinking like that. Um, speak of transitions. Oh my god, like So I start I'm, I'm starting to not wear a mask in places like especially my work building because everyone's vaccinated. Uh, and this new this new place where I'm living, it's not even really conservative, but like people just don't really wear masks. Because, again, I think a lot of people in Massachusetts are vaccinated. Um, and if they're not, well, I am, right? I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, my liberal friends are like, we have to listen to the CDC. The CDC says to get the vaccine. Um, I don't know why my friends have an accent, but. <laughs> and now the CDC is saying, hey, you guys can go out if you're vaccinated, not wear a mask. And my friends are like, well, I don't want to be looked at like a Republican. I'm like, well, you're thinking like it. You're thinking like one of them. Why do you care what other people think about you? You know you're vaccinated. Someone comes to ask you, you say, hey, I'm vaccinated. If they have an issue with it, tell them to put their fucking mask on and you go about your day. Goes back to what I was just saying about Maddie in the morning. Worry about your damn self. Whenever you're about to get into a confrontation with someone, be like, does this really affect me or is this an inconvenience? If it's an inconvenience, you got to tell yourself, oh, let me take a step back because this has shit nothing to do with me. I'll tell you one of the downsides of not wearing a mask. I went to the men's bathroom the other day and Jesus Christ. I mean, there's piss on the floor. Guys just don't... Why are those bathrooms so disgusting? Like, I mean, uh, that's one thing I could say about European dudes is the bathrooms do not look that egregious. I mean, it is fucking filthy. Ten times out of ten in a men's bathroom. Like, do you miss the toilet completely? Like, there was literally piss all over. I'm like, this is fucking disgusting. Men, please teach your sons how to urinate in the bathroom, how to clean up after themselves. You know, I'm not one of those guys who sits down when they pee, but I was, it's funny, I was talking to Carly the other day, I was like, 
this makes so much more sense. Why the why do we teach everyone to stand when they're pee? Like, if everyone just sat when they peed, that would that would solve the problem. That would solve the problem. But you know, we don't have a man who's brave enough to start sitting. <laughs> That's what we need. We need a we need a hero who's gonna start sitting. Maybe if Barack Obama just decides, hey, and I I'm, I'm gonna start sitting when I go to the bathroom. That'll that'll do it. But like my friends, I'm just like, dude, like you you guys keep telling me to listen to the CDC and you tell all call all Republicans morons, you don't listen to the CDC and they don't get vaccinated and they don't do the six feet thing. And now that the CDC is like, hey, we can all go back out and start to get back to normal. You're like, I don't know, dude, uh, it's going to take me some while a while to get used to this. I'm like, just take the mask off. It, the mask isn't going to protect you any more than the vaccine, is it? You got the vaccine. The thing's supposed to be, what, 95% efficient? You probably are more likely to get struck in a car or something like that. Which, speak of which, oh my fucking God. The only place I can honest to God say that has worse drivers in Massachusetts is France. Paris, to be exact. Holy shit. When Carly and I went to Paris a few years back, we were in the car like, hey, you know, at least we might die in the city of love. <laughs> Those people cannot drive. It's crazy. It is. I mean, to get to A to Z with these people, I, you are like, I get why people walk in Europe. I do. I mean, they fucking cannot drive. It is a problem. I don't know what the issue is with people in Massachusetts, though. I mean, it is just inexcusable. I mean, people in Massachusetts, too, it's like, you know you have, when the snow comes out, it gets crazy. You can't go anywhere. It's hard to drive. No one has fucking winter tires. Why does no one in Massachusetts have winter tires? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You, when you, we, go, we go up to Montreal all the time. We go to Canada. Everyone up there has winter tires. You know why? Because they know, oh, when winter's coming around, it's time to get some winter tires. Massachusetts? Nope. And then they, and then they always go, oh, but I got four-wheel drive. <laughs> like, that's not the same thing. Every time, though, every time, man, when I, when I don't have this mask, I always feel like, you ever see that Cardi B meme when she's like, uh, she's standing there on her own, she's like a little kid, and she's like, my mama said, I always feel like, the CDC said I don't gotta wear a mask. <laughs> I should make that a meme, I might go viral. <sighs> Anyways, uh, I was listening to Uncle Joey Diaz this morning, uh, his podcast, and it's funny too, you know, again, going back to the whole cancer culture thing. But he was saying how he was telling this, you know, terrible joke about Tom Brady. And he was like, he was like, it was racist. You know, racist joke with Tom Brady. So the joke was something along the lines of like, um, you know, how Tom Brady uh, basically left his pregnant wife for Giselle, which I don't know if people know that. Uh, and... He was like, I mean, wh wh who the fuck does that? Who leaves their pregnant wife? Other than, you know, the blacks and the Spanish. Or he said Spanish and black in that order, right? And, you know, obviously Diaz, he's Spanish and he's Italian. And he's like, he went up there. And ironically, it was Joe Rogan who told him to go up there and like, yeah, go ahead, say the joke. Um, and he was like, the joke just was completely flat. It, la it, like, it did not land with anyone. Everyone in the audience was kind of like, Yikes. And, you know, he got off stage. And this is a season, you know, this is a season comic. Joey Diaz isn't, you know, just any scrub. And he goes up there, says the joke, doesn't land. And he goes off stage. And he's like, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, like, what is this? You know, this fucking cancel culture shit and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, let me work this joke out. So he said... He literally wrote the joke out, and he was like, oh, fuck, this is so racist. <laughs> it 
it's just funny because like you know Spanish white whatever but he didn't even realize that you know when you because I think in the moment we say things so quickly because our brain's processing and we're just getting our everyone wants to be heard and said and all this shit and you don't even realize what you're saying half the time and he said when he wrote it down he realized he was like oh Christ what am I sympathetic sympathetic hack. And that's how I feel, too. And I'm like, you know, when people keep crying about this, like, cancel culture thing, I'm like, dude, just write better material. You're just not as funny as you think you are, you know? You just aren't saying anything that's connecting with people. If I go out right now and... <coughs> fuck. It's goddamn pollen. Um, if I go out right now and I start singing any stupid song, it's not going to pick up. Because it doesn't connect with people with a bigger audience. You know what I'm saying? And like, I just, for the life of me, can't understand how these people don't understand. And again, to come full circle, it comes back to education. Because if you got educated, right? Or you surrounded by yourself by people who have different opinions than you, then you would hear them out. I have this long-standing theory, and, you know, feel free to disagree with me, but I feel like the only reason that black people kind of got out of slavery was because of interracial relationships. Because slave owners had to feel some empathy, like, oh, that's my son, even though he's not fully my son because he's not fully white. He's still my son, so you start to develop an empathy, it's a lot easier for you to be like, oh, these people want handouts. They're like welfare queens or whatever the fuck they used to call them. But then when it's your mother on welfare, you go, oh, my mom was still going to work. She was still trying to better herself, but the system is fucked up. It's a lot easier when you have a daughter and you realize your daughter's a hustler or a wife and you realize she's a hustler, or an aunt, a sister, whatever, and you're like, damn, you know, little Judy's working her ass off and she still hasn't been promoted. What's that about? Oh, are you kidding me? They got this new guy in here and he's making more than her. That's bullshit. You see what I'm saying? It's a lot easier when it's blood, when it's someone connected to you, when it's someone related. I think a lot of these clowns who are so anti cancel culture, whatever, they what they're mixing up, like I said before, is cancel culture is not an indictment on all white men. It's just as my good friend Talia said on Tea Time, Tea Time every Tuesday, seven thirty, she's like What are these people so mad about? It's not cancel culture. You're not ending someone's career. It's accountability. I was like, shit, that's bars. Like, Talia, you really had bars when you said that. I was like, that's 100% true. It's accountability. That's all it is. And Uncle Joey Diaz, that's exactly what he did. He got off stage. He said, huh, why are the people around me not as receptive to that joke as, I, as you know my friend Joe Rogan? And I think... What he did was he started to process it and said, oh, shit. And he held himself accountable and he took it out of his act. And then he told us that story so that we or anyone else who wants to be a comedian out there, he goes, hold yourself accountable and don't be a hack. Don't try to get these shock value jokes. Don't try to you know stand out that way. Stand out because you're funny. Stand out because you make material that's relatable. Oh, one of my favorite, favorite comedians, Nikki Glaser. I love her. She was on the MTV uh, Awards the other day. And I guess it was the first time they did it unscripted, right? And I didn't watch the whole show. I didn't watch any of it, to be honest. I saw a clip that she posted on her Instagram. And in her like monologue, she was saying, <laughs> she was like, uh, hey, everyone, welcome to the MTV Awards where, you know, it's actual movies and shows that you watched, unlike the Oscars. And I was like, that's so true. And everyone was cracking up because it's like everyone and their mama knows 
at the Oscars is essentially the quote unquote boys club. It's, you know, the the wealthy and rich club. It's the closed off club, the academy. And that's why with the circle club, like I say over and over, it's about just being you. Whatever you like, that's what's important. It does not matter what those clowns over at Rotten Tomatoes say. It doesn't matter what any of these clown critics have to say about Jenny and Georgia, about Emily in Paris, about Bridgerton, about Gossip Girl, about Game of Thrones. It doesn't matter. All that matters is if you like that shit, that's, that's it. That's it. You don't need to appeal to other people's tastes. You don't need to appeal to their likes and wants. It's about what you like at the end of the day and your happiness. But that joke she said just landed so well because it's like she knew, okay, I'm just like the rest of these people. She's connected with these people. She watches reality TV shows. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people don't do that. They're not actually connected with the people when they're talking on these issues. So when you have a fool like Maddie in the morning out here talking about, oh, Demi Lovato wants attention, this, that, the other thing, it's because he doesn't know anyone who's non-binary. He hasn't taken the time to know anyone who's non-binary. You feel me? Um, last thing real quick is uh, Fidelity launched this trading account thing. So you know Robin Hood, that's where you trade your cryptocurrency and stocks. Fidelity launched a trading account for 13 to 17 year olds with their parents' permission. When I read that, I was like, this is the most psychotic thing I have ever heard in my entire life. There, it's illegal to gamble in America if you're not 18 in some places, 21 most places. And you're going to allow these 13 to 17 year olds to join the Wall Street Casino. Because you want an extra dime. I'm like, these guys on Wall Street are such fucking scumbags. Wall Street is full of the worst, worst type of inhumane scum motherfucker you could find. Seriously. I mean, do these bastards have any soul? This is young children out here. Like, this is fucking money that, unlike my clown friends, they should be spending this money on video games. So that they can bond with their friends. And honestly, let me take that back. I'm not even going to clown you know, people who play video games, whatever. I play with them myself. It's cool. You can spend your money however you want. You know? See how I had accountability there? I retracted my statement. But that money that those 13 to 17 year olds should be, hey, little Susie, let's go to get a pizza together. Oh, look at these new Jordans. Let me... Let me let me put those on or, or stunt with those. Oh, let me go watch Hunger Games 7 with my friends. And now their focus is going to be on the stock market because they hear idiots like Portnoy or Elon Musk or whatever talking about, oh, we're to the mood. Like, that's just, this is wrong. This is wrong. And... Honestly, I think children that young should just really be... And I'm, and I'm not one of those people who think that if you're 13, 15, 16, you can't experience life and drink and smoke and do all that stuff. I mean, you got to do what your parents tell you you got to do. You got to do what's best for you. Like I said, in European countries, they let kids grow up. They talk about politics. They drink wine with their children. And they tend to be more open-minded and intelligent. Because their parents don't treat them like babies. But this is one thing to me where I'm like, yeah, this is a little too far. Meanwhile, again, you got, you got some people who think it's too far to let children choose their identity or sexuality. And I'm like, but this isn't too far? Getting children addicted to gambling at 13 to 17? I mean, the whole pay-to-play thing in video games, it, for you guys who don't know what that means, it's like, in order to play a game, like, say, Fortnite, right? The, the creators make this baseline version of the game. You pay 50 bucks for. But if you want the character with the cool costumes, the cool weapons, unlock levels, play with your friends online, you got to pay to play. 
and that whole mindset and like like I know NBA 2K, right? So they do this pack thing that you open and it's again, it's the same thing as gambling. You put 20 bucks into this video game that is not real. You open up a pack in the hopes that you get a Kobe Bryant card, a Michael Jordan card, a LeBron James card. I don't, like, to me, it's crazy, 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 crazy that people are concerned about their kid being gay, but not their kid getting hooked to crack cocaine, essentially, this gambling shit. I mean, this is no different than crack cocaine. People think that gambling is not an addiction that you can have. This is a legitimate thing. I don't know, man. It's just, it's messed up. But um, I'm going to head out of here. Uh, go Bruins. They're playing the Caps tonight, 630. Uh, series is tied 1-1. I think that they can do it. I think they can get the 2-1 lead. The Caps are no joke. Um, I think if the Bruins win this series, I really do think that they can go all the way. And uh, tonight in the NBA, we got Spurs versus Grizzlies. No one's watching that. No one cares, 730. Um, the Grizzlies should pull it out, but no one cares. And the big, big, big match is the Lakers versus Warriors, 10 o'clock. I got the Lakers. I think the Lakers pull it off. I think they win by seven points. I'm going to say Lakers by seven points. Anthony Davis is going to just go crazy. Um, if you're watching this on a Thursday or listening to this on a Thursday, uh, join us on stream, 730 uh, Twitch will be live. We have a special guest, uh, Jamie Henderson. He's a firefighter. He's played basketball with some people who've gone pro, semi-pro. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great show. We're going to talk a little bit, you know, for you guys who like the movies and stuff like that. We're going to talk a bit about, you know, our favorites to start off. And then for the basketball heads, we're going to get into that the second half. So, even if you don't like it, send it to a friend. Let your friends know that we're going to get into some basketball talk. Um, but that's going to do it. I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Take care. Shorty from Barbados. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Well, I can't fight a halo. Last time I seen a shorty like you, my crib had cable. I don't remember yet the last time that my crib had cable. Take my hand, I'll say you.